G'day, Wombat here, and in this edition of Past Glory, we're going to take a look at the SE Soap Bar 2 from Paul Reed Smith. Smith or PRS produce American made guitars and these days they also do the S2 range which is also American made but kind of stripped down from the usual um, very expensive high-end range they do in America but they also have these lovely instruments the SE range that comes from um, a few different places around the world um, Indonesia Korea um, this particular one is made by World Musical Instruments, the same factory that makes uh, the Chapman guitars and a lot of the ESP stuff as well these days, the LTD series. Um, so it comes from that factory. This particular model is a 2006 uh, Soap Bar 2. Now they don't make these anymore um, and I thought it was just an interesting guitar to get a hold of if you wanted to get a hold of something from, from Paul Reed Smith but didn't have the exceptional amount of money that it requires to buy one of their high-end guitars, then this could possibly be the answer for you. So let's have a look at it. It is a mahogany body with a maple cap, and as you can see, it's got this beautiful uh, maple veneer on it as well in this lovely green burst. It really is quite, quite nice, actually. Um, the neck itself is maple, um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see with the, the camera, but um, the tuners are actually PRS tuners. Now, I know that PRS actually licensed these tuners um, from their American-made own spec ones. Um, they're made at a cheaper price, obviously, but there they are. Um, and un unlike a lot of uh, guitars in a you know more budget, fancy kind of thing, they're actually branded with the PRS logos on them, which is cool. Rosewood fretboard with 22 frets um, and as you can see um, the the bird inlays that we normally associate with uh, Paul Reed Smith guitars aren't there they're, they're missing they're, it looks at first you could just be mistaken for a regular uh, dot kind of inlay on these things but it's not they're actually a little moon inlay so inside the dot is actually a little moon uh, that's inlaid in in like a um i'm assuming it's a plastic or a perloid kind of material but it's actually the original fret markers that paul used in his very first set of guitars was this kind of thing and then he did a special one with the birds and everybody seemed to love the birds so that's now become the the way that he makes guitars with the bird inlays you know so the se's that you can get now have the bird inlays in some of them but this this one from back in 2006 they didn't have them this this got the uh, the moon treatment so there you are something a little bit different about it that they don't really do a lot of anymore in fact i think the last time i saw the moon inlay was on a special edition high-end um, american prs so there you are There's something just a little bit different about it ping 90 pickups in it um, I don't know who's made the P90 pickups, whether they're specced by PRS themselves or whether it's just something that world musical instruments have lying around. I don't know. Uh, tone and volume and three-way selector switch in the um, always unusual but very, very Paul Reed Smith spot. Um, Wraparound tailpiece bridge, which is a little bit different to kind of what we normally see uh, if we're looking at this you know uh, a maple and mahogany bodied guitar would normally have a stop tail piece and the bridge this is a wrap around that um that prs are known for using uh when they're not using a tremolo model so that's sort of what it's all about um let's talk about if it's any good or not so this 
is a really well-made guitar. It is super good. It's it's heavy, but it's not ridiculous heavy. It's not Les Paul heavy. So um, that's always reassuring with a mahogany body. If there's a bit of weight to it, you want that weight from mahogany. Um, gives you you know the best opportunities at, at getting vibration and tone out of it. Um, so it is really, really well made. Set neck, as you can see. Um, now these things retailed for around about the thousand dollar mark um, back in 2006 when they came on the market. Um, so they weren't the cheapest guitars out there. The SE, of course, stood for student edition back then. Now it's just simply SE. They don't refer to the student edition anymore. Um, but it's really, 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 really well made. The neck itself is, it kind of reminded me of my Slash Les Paul. Um, it's, it's chunky, but it's not over the top chunky. It's not like a, like a vintage Les Paul style neck. But it, there is a little bit of girth to the hand, but it, not enough to get in your way. Never stopped me playing anything. It's a really, really nice neck. And, and a little bit familiar in, in one respect of the, the chunk. It's, it's kind of familiar to me. So I, could, I found it very easy to play. Um, it is a little wider, though, than a lot of electric necks that I have played in the past, including my Slash Les Paul, which is kind of this sort of a chunk. Um, well, it's not really a chunk. It's not that comfortable neck I often talk about. So it's not, it's not a thinner, comfortable neck. There's a bit more girth to it. But it, as I said, it never gets in your way. The, the fretboard is a little wider than I'm used to. Uh, didn't stop me in playing anything. Was just a little bit interesting in the hand at first. But all in all, it played like a dream. It was a beautiful guitar. Felt great on a strap. Um, and, and played really, really nicely. So I'm really, really happy there. Um, the pickups though, the pickups were interesting. So I like a P90 pickup um, because it gives you a lot of the tonal characteristics of a single coil, but it gives it to you in a fatter setting. So you get a bit more girth to the sound and sometimes a bit more poke um, than you would a regular single coil, but maybe not quite as much as a humbucker. So I expect single coils to excel at being clean um, a good single coil should do that because the, the tonal response is, is better than a humbucker's tonal response. These were adequate, clean, not fantastic. Um, they didn't suck by any stretch of the imagination, but they didn't exactly make me want to play a bunch clean. Um, th then the funny things started happening. I uh, switched to a blues sound and they got really thin as the amp started to break a little bit they, they became very thin sounding like you'd expect a, a more traditional single coil to be that's sort of where they went and it was just really awful and and I think the, the neck pickup was a bit muddy um, in that kind of a setting just just wasn't great you know um, so I was I was you know thinking you know write these pickups off but then I switched to a rock sound and these things came alive. In a rock tone, they were phenomenal. They were really good, fat and um, lots of poke. So I was really quite surprised by that. This thing is a rock machine. Let me tell you, with these pickups in it, it is a flat out rock player. Um, just excelled. I mean, that's where it lived. It was great. So having said that, I thought, okay, so they're handling distortion quite well. Let's see what they do with metal. I mean, you would never really normally use metal um, on a, a single coil guitar because of the noise, but I thought, let's do it. You know, always do it anyway. So I fed it with plenty of metal distortion and they got really thin again. It was really just odd. Oh, there's no other way to put it. It was just odd. They just got really thin again. They handled the distortion okay, which was surprisingly for uh, good for a, a, a P90, but man, it was just, it just got really thin again. And um, yeah, really uninspiring. So, and of course, then you had the added, the extra added noise with that much distortion. So um, a really odd set of pickups. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. They were just weird. Um, didn't excel where I thought they would excel and just ate the rock tones up. 
beautifully. So a bit of an odd situation there. If I was to own this guitar myself, I think I'd replace them with maybe some Seymour Duncan uh, P90s or Damasio P90s, something like that, um, that are going to give me a better tonal response where I want it to live, this kind of a guitar. But rock-wise, it was great. So there you are. That is the SE Soap Bar 2 from PRS. Now, as I said earlier, this recommended uh, retail was about $1,000 when they came out in 2006. Um, these days, secondhand, and that's what we're you know looking at, um, they'll retail as high as about $800, which isn't much of a saving. And to my mind, with these pickups, that's a bit high. Um, I don't think I'd feel great about paying that and then having to spend some money to replace the pickups to get it to do kind of what I want to do. As I said, it's a great guitar with a with a really good set of pickups in it. It would be a phenomenal guitar. But for $800, uh, I'd want more of a saving than that, you know. Uh, this actually belongs to a friend of mine. This is his guitar, and he picked it up for about $350. So that is way under that $800 mark, a huge saving on the initial retail price, and it's in really good nick, plays beautiful, and with those pickups, $350 is a bit of a steal. So um, he could put new pickups in this. He's really happy with the ones that are in it um, for where he sort of sits in the tonal spectrum, um, and that's cool. So... But that is, that is it. That is the PRS um, Soap Bar 2 SE Edition from, um, as I said, Paul Reed Smith. So there you are. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a bit of a like and uh, perhaps give it a share. Um, and yeah, so beautiful guitar. Beautiful guitar. As always, rock on, guys!